He is considered to be one of the last of the 19th century New York street gangsters who preceded the rise of Arnold Rothstein and more sophisticated organized criminal enterprises later. To many, he was New York's first great gangster of the modern era. But he was a brutal cretinous thug who would rob, steal, and cheat his way into power and money. J. Robert Nash noted, Edward Monk Eastman was a wild, berserk skullcracker who delighted in street brawls and murder. Eastman's background remains a subject of much debate. The most common story, however, popularized by Herbert Asbury in his book, The Gangs of New York, says Eastman was born Edward Osterman in Brooklyn in 1875 to an affluent Jewish restaurant owner. Around the age of 20, according to Asbury, his father set him up with a pet shop where he could indulge in his hobby of raising and selling birds. But it should be noted that there is no documentation to support this story. One thing is for certain, however. At some point, Edward Monk Eastman was seduced by the action and easy money of Manhattan's underworld, which he later went on to control. This is not to say that Eastman didn't run a pet store or have a love for birds. On the contrary, even after he had become a notorious gangster, Eastman continued to list bird seller as his occupation. He got the name Monk because of his appearance. The street battles had taken their toll and left his face cut and potted with scars and a scowling look. Someone once observed that he resembled a monkey and the name Monk stuck. Eastman distinguished himself as a colorful character in those early days by rarely washing or combing his hair and wearing a derby two sizes too small and clothes which barely fit. His first arrest came in 1898 for larceny, where he spent three months on Blackwell's Island. It was during this time that he joined a gang of pimps and thieves known as the Allen Street Cadets. Though only around five foot six inches tall, Eastman was wide and bulky. His reputation as a tough guy got him a job offer as a bouncer at New Irving Hall, a celebrated club on Broom Street. According to legend, Eastman patrolled the saloon with an axe handle-like weapon in his hand in which he carved a notch for every head he'd bashed in. One night Eastman reportedly whacked a man who was sitting at the bar minding his own business and quietly drinking a beer. When asked what the man had done, Monk replied, I had 49 notches and I wanted to make it an even 50. It was in places like New Irving Hall that Eastman first became involved with the corrupt Democrat political machine known as Tammany Hall. The politicians Monk had befriended would pay him and his gang, which numbered in the hundreds, big money to strong-arm voters and kill political rivals. Eastman's world seemed perfect. He had money, power, influence, and a different girl every night if he wanted. So absolute was his power that for a time he could commit a crime right out in the open in front of a police officer and get away with it. Eastman went so far as to publish a price list for his services. Ear chawed off, $15. Leg or arm broken, $19. Shot in the leg, $25. Stab, $25. Doing the big job, $100 and up. Every morning, Monk would meet with his lieutenants to go over their daily assignments. And though he had hundreds of thugs who would do his bidding for him, he always selected one guy to do himself, one guy to beat to a bloody pulp. Though there is no way to verify the number, it is believed that Monk Eastman himself had murdered more than 50 men. But his luck would run out at the beginning of the 20th century when one night he ventured outside of his territory and ran smack dab into Paul Kelly and his mostly Italian gang known as the Five Points Gang. Paul Kelly was Eastman's greatest rival. The warfare between these two gangs allegedly peaked on September 17, 1903 with a gun battle on Rivington Street involving dozens of men. During the melee, two men were killed and numerous innocent bystanders were injured. Voters who tired of the gang violence began putting pressure on Tammany Hall and the monk's influence began to wane. His political contacts began calling on him less and less. On February 3, 1904, Eastman attempted to rob a man on 42nd Street and Broadway in Manhattan. However, the young man was being followed by two Pinkerton agents hired by the man's family to keep him out of trouble. 
The Pinkertons intervened and Eastman started shooting at the agents while running away. The chase ended when Eastman was apprehended by police responding to the shooting. Tired of the bad publicity from Eastman, this time Tammany Hall refused to help and later that year Eastman was convicted and sentenced to 10 years in Sing Sing Prison. In 1909, Eastman was released after serving five years. During his absence, the gang he had ruled was shattered into several factions. One of his top men, Max Kid Twist Zwerbach, was dead. Since none of the surviving factions wanted Eastman as their leader, he was effectively out of power. For several years, Eastman wandered about committing petty crimes. After the United States entered World War I, the 44-year-old Eastman decided to join the army. During his military physical, the doctor observed all the knife and bullet scars on Eastman's body and asked him which wars he had been in. Eastman replied, oh, a lot of little wars around New York. Eastman ended up serving in France with Orion's Roughnecks, the 106th Infantry Regiment of the 27th Infantry Division. After Eastman was discharged in 1919, the then governor of New York, Al Smith, recognized Monk's honorable service by restoring his U.S. citizenship, which had been stripped from him because of his criminal past. After the army, Eastman quickly returned to a life of petty crime. One of his partners was Jerry Bowen, a corrupt prohibition agent. On the morning of December 26, 1920, a group of men, including Eastman and Bowen, met at the Bluebird Cafe in Lower Manhattan. About four in the morning, there was a group conflict over a monetary issue with Eastman and Bowen opposing one another. When Bowen left, Eastman followed him and accused him of being a thief. Bowen drew his pistol and killed Eastman on the spot. Edward Monk Eastman was buried with full military honors in Cypress Hill Cemetery in Brooklyn. The send-off was a who's who in political power and gangsterdom. The funeral would later come to symbolize the big gangster send-offs which became popular during that era.